You have a quadratic equation in standard form. You can reformulate it by completing the square. The same is true in the multivariate case where you can also reformulate it. Welcome to this video where we will introduce both of the formats including simple examples. Hi! The agenda for this video is that we will first look at the univariate or scalar case and then we will look at a multivariate case with vectors. So let us start with the univariate case. For this, I will write down on the left side what we are given. We have ax squared plus bx plus c, and we want to transform it into x minus d in brackets squared, keeping the coefficient a plus an e. And let us expand this expression in order to compare the coefficients. And if we do this, then we get a times x squared minus 2xd plus d squared in brackets plus e. Then let's multiply with a and then we get ax squared minus 2adx, I changed the order here, plus ad squared plus e. Then let's compare the coefficients and we see a is a, that makes sense. Then we look at the coefficients in front of and the x. There we get that b is minus 2ad. And then lastly, we have c equals a d squared plus e. Then let's rearrange for d. And we get that d is nothing else than minus b over 2a. Then we can use this d and plug it into the expression that we have down here. And we get c is equal to a times minus b over 2a in brackets squared plus e. And if we then expand the square, then we get a times b squared over four times a squared. The a cancels plus e. And if we then rearrange for e, then we get e is c minus b squared over four times a. And then we have our three equations in order to complete the square. Let us look at an example. And the example is given as follows. We have 5x squared minus 3x plus 7. Then we see, well, a is 5, b is minus 3, and c is 7. Then we can calculate, well, a stays 5, d becomes minus b over 2a. So d is minus b, so minus 3, over 2 times a, which is 2 times 5, which will be 3 over 10. And our e will be c, that is 7, minus b squared, which was minus 3 in brackets squared, over 4 times a, over 4 times 5. And then we are getting 7 minus 9 over 20. And if we multiply with 20, then we get 140 minus 9 over 20, equaling 131 over 20. And then we have our completed square format given as a is 5, so 5 times x minus d minus 3 over 10 in brackets squared plus the e, which is 131 over 20. And we can also check that this is the correct solution by expanding the square just for your completion here. Then we get x squared minus 3 over 10 times x plus 9 over 100, closing bracket, plus 131 over 20. And we multiply by 5, we get 5x squared minus 15 over 10x, plus 45 over 100, plus 131 over 20. And if we cancel, then we see we get a 3 here, and we can create a common denominator, and then we have 5x squared minus 3x, plus the common denominator is 100. Then we multiply this by 5. It's 45 plus 655. And this will be 700. And 700 over 700 will be 7. And then we recovered our original form. With this in mind, let us now continue to the multivariate case. So the multivariate case, we have the problem given as x vector transposed a x so x is a vector capital a is a matrix 
Then we have plus b transpose x and b again is a vector and c and so plus c and c will be a scalar and we want to transform it into x minus d in brackets transpose a times x minus d in brackets plus a new scalar e and for this we want to find the vector d we want to find the matrix a and we want to find the scalar e well let's do the same strategy as before just multiply out and then we compare the coefficients so we get x transpose ax then we get plus or more precisely minus x transpose a d then we have another minus d transpose a x then we have a plus which will be d transpose a d and then finally we keep our scalar surely there wasn't an underscore because it's a rank zero tensor but then let's look at this expression here and if you do the multiplication vector transpose matrix vector will give you a scalar so this is nothing else as a scalar let's call it psi and for scalars we know that they have to be the transpose of themselves because they're just like non-dimensional units so by this we know that d transpose a x is the same as d transpose a x in brackets transpose and if we apply the transposition rules so also the order changes then we have x transpose a transpose d and d loses its transposition and now we have to make an assumption or we have to make some kind of a definition for us in order to apply the completing the squares that we enforce a to be symmetric so let a be symmetric and this means nothing else as this matrix is the same as its trend post so a is a transpose and if we do this then we get x transpose ad and we see well fantastic this is what we also have up here so in total um, we would be continuing on our path here and we would be getting x transpose ax minus 2 times x transpose a d and then we have this term plus the scalar so this will be plus d transpose a d plus e okay then let's get back down what we had up here in order for us to make the comparison and we had an x transpose a x plus an x transpose b plus a c and with the corresponding rank tensors here and then we can make our comparison and firstly we see again a is a because in this term where two x's appear it is the matrix that is in uh, yeah kind of like sandwiched in these two x's so we can make the conclusion a is a perfect then next up we see we look at the coefficient um, that x transpose or like the vector x transpose is multiplied with and we see this b and here we will get this is a times d minus 2 times a d and so we get b vector is minus 2 times a matrix d vector and lastly we have c which is the scalar c and this is given as this one here it will be vector d transpose matrix a vector d plus the scalar e okay then let's rearrange here and in order to rearrange this equation we have to yeah, divide by minus 2 and we have to multiply with a inverse from both sides and then we get the vector d that we are looking for is nothing else as minus 1 over 2 a inverse b and then we can get back down here and plug the d into what we have here then we have c is well let's plug it in as it is it is minus one half a inverse b transpose matrix a minus one half a inverse b plus e and we see well the scalars we can put them out of the multiplication because they commute and we get one over four 
and then let's do the transposition so the order changes and we apply the transpose to all of the components and we get c is 1 over 4 b transpose a minus t which means um, inverse transpose times a times a inverse times b plus e and surely a times a inverse is nothing else as the identity matrix and now we can use another matrix identity and we see that in this case a to the minus t since we require that a is symmetric from this also follows that the inverse of the matrix is symmetric so a inverse is equal to a to the minus t so a inverse transpose and based on this we then get c is 1 over 4 b transpose a inverse b plus e and in order to rearrange for e we just yeah subtract by this this is nothing else as a scalar and then we get the last equation which is c minus 1 over 4 b transpose a inverse vector b so let's put this together we have a is a this is quite obvious then we have the equation for d and lastly we have the equation for e then let's also look at an example here and the example that we'll be looking at is given as a two-dimensional example with x1 and x2 transpose and the matrix is 1 1 1 2 then we have x1 x2 then plus x1 x2 times transpose times the vector b which is 2 4 plus the scalar 3 let's quickly recap we have the matrix a we have the vector b and we have the scalar c and also see that a is symmetric so a is symmetric and you can easily see this because it's transposable and it is the same when you transpose it okay then first step in order to make the transformation into the square form is to invert matrix a so we do the matrix inversion a inverse is 1 over the determinant and then you know the rule for the 2 by 2 matrix and the determinant is 1 times 2 minus 1 times 1 which will be 1 over 2 minus 1 then we swap the main diagonal elements to 1 and here we would bring a minus in here and then let's evaluate this like 1 over 2 minus 1 which will just be 1 and then the matrix is given in the format as we have it here and the hint here of course is never invert matrices and you know say well this is kind of a double standard you just inverted the matrix well that's correct i mean it's a simple example but imagine like matrices with 100s 1000s of components in them for this you would then use something like lu decomposition or Cholesky decomposition this is numerically way more stable but it's not wrong to think of it as an invert and for small matrices well it's it's fine so let's just continue and the first step is to calculate the new vector d and the new vector d was given as minus 1 over 2 a inverse times b then let's plug in what we have minus 1 over 2 and then the matrix was 2 minus 1 minus 1 1 and we multiply it with well the vector b which is 2 4 then let's do the matrix multiplication 2 times 2 is 4 min minus 1 times 4 is 4 4 minus 4 is 0 so keep the scalar coefficient and then we get 0 in the first component and then minus 1 times 2 is minus 2 plus 4 will be just 2 and if we divide this by 2 and put a minus in then we get a 0 1 and that's the d vector and of course i forgot the minus one here then let's continue with the e scalar and the e scalar was given as c scalar minus one over four b transpose a inverse b and let's plug in what we have so c was well if we go up there c was a three then we get a three minus a one over four times and the vector b was two four transpose and our inverse was 2 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then 2 4 then let's start with doing this multiplication here and this essentially is equal to what we've just done before which will be the vector 0 2 
And then if we do the scalar product essentially of these two vectors, then we are getting three minus one over four in brackets, two times zero plus four times two. And then we have three minus, well, four times two is eight, over four will be two, three minus two, and then E will be one. So then we can plug this into the final form. And we recall this was X minus D vectors in brackets transpose, then matrix A, not inverted, then X minus D in brackets, plus the new scalar E. And if you plug in what we have, so we have a big bracket here, and we have X1, X2 as before, then we have the D and we just calculated it to be zero minus one. So let's plug this in, zero minus one, then we multiply with the original matrix A, and the original matrix A was, well, it was one, 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 two. So we have one, 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 two, then we have the same as before. And of course I forgot to transpose here, minus zero minus one, and then we add the scalar and the scalar was one. And surely, of course, to make it a little more pleasing, you can also just cancel the minuses and write a plus instead. And then you have the square form of your multivariate expression. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope the derivation together with the examples were clear. If you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment. And if you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing and liking. I would really appreciate this. And with this, here you will see similar videos. And I'm looking forward to see you next time.